All right, everyone, we're back at Beaver Creek Precious Metals Conference Day 3. I'm joined by Suma Silver, silver company in the U.S., Galen McNamara, CEO. Galen, thanks for being with us. Yeah, great to be back, and nice to uh, finally do this in person. I know, exactly. Zoom only works for so long, everyone, so it's nice to yeah, kind of be here doing it do in real life. Yeah, that's true. So let me kick it off. Uh, Galen, can you just give us a quick breakdown of your assets for people that don't know Suma? Yeah, yeah, perfect place to start. So we have high-grade silver assets in the United States. And there's these two, one's in Nevada, one's in New Mexico. And then there are these two old Wild West places that really help shape those early uh, early days of the American West in the late 1800s and were big producers in their time, but haven't really seen much or any modern exploration before uh, we came along and started working on them. And you know, there's an old saying in mining, and I've probably told you this before, the best place to find a new mine is right next to an old mine. <laughs> and uh, when, you, when you get a chance to go into these places that, you know, as a geologist we've heard about in textbooks, you know, from when I was in school, and, and, and make new discoveries, which is what we're doing, it's a, it's a really significant and unique opportunity. Gotcha. Yeah. That's a great rundown. Thank you. Now, um, you have a slide that I want you to talk about. You make district comparisons between some um, big districts in Mexico and other countries and then in uh, Tonopah, Nevada. So can you yeah. explain to everyone how that how are you thinking on yeah, that? Yeah, so so you know what, going back to when I was first looking at these projects before SUMA was even SUMA, you know, and I, I thought to myself, well, if we're gonna do this, it, it better have a chance to be big. So can this compare to some of the famous Mexican silver districts that the Spanish have been mining going back 500 years and the indigenous peoples even before that? You know, these places that have produced 500 million ounces, a billion ounces of silver. So I thought, you know, okay, is there a comparison to these places? And I, and I just thought to myself, well, Look at Tonopah, and that's the first example, produced over a mined length of four kilometers, you know, and 175 million ounces of silver and two million ounces of gold came out of there. Well, if you look at places like Guanajuato in Mexico or Sandy Mass, or these are famous places that, you know, have produced so much silver, you know, they've produced over a much larger strike length, you know, and of course many more ounces, many, many more ounces, but, you know, instead of four kilometers, it's seven kilometers or 18 kilometers. So I just saw that same potential in Tonopah where I thought to myself, okay, look, we're starting now, starting to hit, you know, four and a half kilometers past that four kilometers in Tonopah, right? So that, like, when you, when you take the four kilometers of Tonopah, double it, you know, it starts to fit in quite nicely with how big these districts can get when they get to be truly, truly world class. And that's why, I, you know, going back to 2020, I flew down to Nevada, rented a car, went and staked a bunch of claims myself. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. That, yeah, so that was, I thought that was a really interesting strategy that you have there, and I would recommend everyone check out that chart. It kind of puts it in perspective. We'll, we'll maybe throw it up while we're talking to. Yeah. Now, um, yesterday you announced some interesting targets on the New Mexico property. Yes. I'm just curious, what is the sampling data telling you, and what is your plan to start testing these yes. targets? So. The sampling data is telling us, and first of all, you know what, what it was was some historical compilation of old data. We're always looking for old data and finding old data and yep. putting it into our 3D models. And what we found was that you know, there's these old underground mines that you know, sample data 2,000 grams per ton, 3,000 grams per ton, 5,000 grams per ton, and no drillable data underneath it or around it. So as we try to step away from where we first drilled, you know, this data is going to, these samples are going to be a good guide for us to really start, you know, just, just follow up on those, go below where those samples are, and hopefully uh, start hitting good high grades right away. But that's one of the things that we're gonna be working on this uh, this fall. This fall is when you're thinking of exactly. starting? Exactly, we're starting this fall. You know, again, and on that vein in New Mexico, it's over a, a, a strike length of two kilometers where we're getting these high grades, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, the term isn't quite fish in a barrel, but it makes our lives as geologists much more efficient. Yeah, a lot of opportunity, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Now, so you have uh, very prospective properties, two different places. How do you decide where you're splitting your resources? Yeah. I'm curious to. That's a really good question. So, what it comes down to is where I think the discovery costs per ounce are going to be cheapest. You know, wherever the, that's really the, what it comes down to. So, right now, this this past summer, we drilled uh, six or seven holes in Nevada and made two new discoveries, which was nice. But when you look at uh, when you look at a place like New Mexico, one of the holes we drilled there was 30 meters of 448 grams per ton silver equivalent. That hole builds ounces really quickly. 
really, really quickly and very, very um, efficiently on a cost per ounce basis. And just you know, an, a number out there that I would expect it would be would be somewhere in the neighborhood of ten to fifteen cents per ounce. So I mean, if if you can discover silver that's worth twenty three dollars and change today for ten to fifteen cents per ounce, yeah. I think you're doing pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. So it's based on what the market's giving you, and then also as the the um, intercepts come in, then you make decisions on where you go next. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. It's an iterative process that you're always changing when you get more information. So like one one hole might hit better, you concentrate around there. One hole that you thought was going to be good might hit a little worse. So now you re re uh, you re budgeted meters over here. The yeah. beauty of uh, mining. Huh? Yeah, that's right. The beauty <laughs> yeah. of exploration, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And you know, for us, like the thing I would say to you, like we have a very hungry and nimble team, so we uh, decision making for us can be very quick and efficient. Oh, that's refreshing. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Now, I, I wanted to um, ask you about your longer term bogeys on resource. What I mean is, what's a resource number? Is it two million, three million ounces? Where it gives you m the optionality you want as far as an M and A target, yeah. funding uh, the next phase, you know, kind of yeah. what, do you, what would you hope to achieve? Well, you know, like we're here in Beaver Creek and I think one of the themes of this conference is M&A. You know, I personally think that there's just too many companies out there and not enough quality and not to, you know, that's just the, that's just the way it is in this business. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, you know, I can't really talk about resource numbers yet because, you know, we don't have one and, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not uh, rushing to put one out. Um, it's just because there's so much work to do. Yeah. You know, and, and people will think it's a finish line when I think it's only a start line. But what I can say, like very fairly, is that look, if I didn't see on both of these projects potential for a hundred million ounces, then I would be wasting my time. Got it. You know, and uh, you know, life's too short for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. You wouldn't have even started. No. Yeah. Gotcha. No. Okay, that's yeah. helpful. Yeah. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming drill program? What timeline you're thinking, and what are you hoping to achieve strategically if it, if it goes great? Yeah. So we're just uh, right now we're just finishing up a drill program in Toronto, Nevada, um, following up on a discovery we made uh, this um, summer. That's a big 600 meter step out from that, uh, which is interesting. And I mean, my fingers are very crossed every day. I get my updates. Um, but what we're going to be doing is returning to New Mexico in about four to six weeks and just drilling out underneath where those his, those samples I was discussing earlier are. Yeah, it's not exciting. You know what? Because it wouldn't, it's not going to take much for us to really start to be able to show that potential, that big, you know, multi, you know, multi, multi, multi million ounce potential. And I think we can do a very efficient surgical program that's going to, that's, that, that gives us a real shot of doing that. And, you know, for us, we've got seven and a half million dollars in the bank. We're very well financed. So, you know, for, we are going to efficiently continue to build ounces in New Mexico. Great. Way. I think that's helpful. As people think about what to look forward to next, uh, yes. that, that was very useful. License to drill. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So everyone, that was uh, Suma Silver, CEO Galen McNamara. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Galen, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much.